<laughs> Hallå tillbaka till Jacka Jacka. <laughs> hey! All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome to episode five of the Whiskey Ways podcast. Sorry. I'm your host, Dylan. Oh, hey, this Brett. What's oh. happening? Okay. Barretto. What's up? It's Alex Yermi. Yermi. <laughs> yaka ya. Yaka ya. All right. We got a pretty interesting episode for you guys this week. Um, but first, as usual, we're going to start off with our bottle of whiskey for the week. Uh, Alex, go ahead and tell them what that is. All right. So we got a fifth of uh, Bullet Rye, uh, the Bullet Ugh. 95 Rye. So, I mean, I feel like, you know, most people have at least heard of, um, if not had like Bullet Bourbon. And uh, this is like a, a pretty popular brand, so yeah, I've never, not, I've never had bullet rye, so I've never, uh, I've, I haven't either. I've had their bourbon. I love their bourbon; yes. it's good stuff. But like, I don't know about this rye. I'm not a huge fan of it. So, um, yeah. So, I guess since uh, it's a pretty popular one, we don't have to like run through the entire thing. But uh, got oh, us yeah. some, uh, just some shots to take, just straight. Not, not like shoot it, but you know, I mean, if you want to. I mean, yeah, I'm probably gonna bit. sip first. Yeah, you know, you got and then to. I'll, I'll I'll run it. Yeah, so uh, I actually looked up, you know, how to professionally taste whiskey, right? So there's a lot that goes into it. You know, you got to smell it, you got to taste it, you got to smell it again, swish it around, yeah. coat your whole palate, and yeah. then uh, and then take your notes. So I guess uh, without any further ado, we'll go ahead and toast this up to uh, week five. Mm. All right, boys, we're over a month in. Yep. So you got to agitate you it. You smell that 90 proof. You got to agitate it first. You, you, you smell. You pull it away a little bit. Okay. Smell it. Okay. So you can kind of smell like, you know, whether whether it's the wood chips or whether it's like a certain flavor you're looking for, like say pineapple or peanut butter. Like that's why you agitate it and you sniff, pull it away, and then you go ahead and put some on your palate. It's not bad. I'm, bro, I started, smelling, I started smelling the microphone. <laughs> Are you drunk already? <laughs> I mean, what is this? 95 proof? 90 proof. 90 proof? Yeah. I mean. I think this is the strongest. <laughs> I think this is the, the highest proof bottle we've this had on the, the show so far. We've had so. on the show so far. So, I'm going to knock We're this one back. We're working our way up. I'm going to knock it back. Ooh. Wham, bam, no thank you, man. <sighs> I mean, oh. okay. That might have been a little bit overreacting, what I just said, but I don't know. You know, I'm really not a fan of rye whiskey, and I don't really know what it is, but that's not bad. No, it wasn't bad at all. That's Better than bad. I was expecting. I made a lot of faces. I was over-exaggerating, but... All right. It made me feel good about it. Yeah, I feel like I kind of got life. a little sour face going on right yeah. now, but it, it was not bad. So... I'm sure everybody knows what the bottle looks like, but if you don't, I mean, it literally is embroidered on there, bullet rye. Yeah. And you're looking for the green label if you want to try the bullet rye. Uh, so, yeah. You know, honestly, I thought I was going to have a lot more to say about it, but it's just it's just a whiskey. Yeah, it's, you know it's, what I mean? This is like one of those it's traditional not, straight Not bad, whiskeys. not great, but it's like, it's just, yeah, I, I, you know, honest, I would call it pretty traditional. So... I mean, not, yeah, I mean, not any, not any like crazy outstanding flavors going on. Yeah, you know, it's, like that. But I mean, it's it's kind of just basic. A little yeah. bit. I, 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 I brought honest, my gentleman. Jack I want to be honest case. though. I think I like the Peniolo from last week better. I'd say so too. I like, bro. But per I usual, like that, I like that Peniolo. I got a wix mi- wix. Yo, <laughs> it's that. It's that. Time. I gotta mix my whiskey with some coke. Didi drunk. Didi, 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 Didi. <laughs> cut the tape, Didi, cut the tape. <laughs> You're drunk. All right. Oh, so, boy. yeah. So, just to kind of, we were kind of rambling on there in the beginning. But basically, if you're interested in learning how to basically properly uh, taste whiskey, um, you need to tr- you need to sniff. And like we said, you agitate. So, agitate meaning like stir it around. Yeah. So, you, so you give it a like an initial sniff. You kind of agitate it, just kind of like swirl it around in the glass, and uh, it kind of like you know mixes up those flavors and stuff like that because yeah. it, you know, it kind of okay. s- almost like like settles when it sits in the bottle. So then, kind of agitate it, and you you know get a get a good sniff of it, and you you taste it. You just give it a little taste to get mm. that alcohol, like that alcohol, like uh, 
like scent out of it. Yeah. yeah. So then when you smell it again, like because your palate's already coated with the alcohol, so you don't the alcohol doesn't smell as strong the second time. Yeah. So the then palate. like yeah so. And then on your second, you know, your second smell, you're going for like, you know, any kind of like flavors or fragrances that stand out. Like rye is, rye is typically like a little bit more fragrant yeah. than uh, regular whiskey. But um, yeah, and on, but in this one, you know, there really wasn't a whole lot going on. It was really just, it's just a. It's got me burping already. Traditional whiskey. It's just a decent, plain old rye whiskey. Yeah. Nothing crazy. Plain old. Yep. Nothing crazy. So, over. also, we got some fun facts for you guys. Uh, apparently, there are some health benefits, according to some people, yeah. of drinking whiskey. Yeah, so well, actually, given that you take it in moderation, not... Well, you, okay. Yeah, it's okay, yeah. This is, so, is going to be, like, just kind of like one of those gray areas. Yeah. So, know? like, uh, I ran into this article uh, last week, like, while Dylan was recording the or uh, editing the video for last week. I uh, was just scrolling through and I ran into this article and it was talking about the health benefits of drinking whiskey and it gave 10, 10 potential health benefits. Um, we're just going to kind of run through some of them um, yeah. and then like highlight a couple here and there. So first and foremost, um, it's said to be a weight loss aid. So we'll see. I'm on my keto. So yeah, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> whiskey fits into that because it's yeah. a, uh, it's a low carb liquor. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, um, as you know, as far as like liquors go, it's the low lowest in carbs. So like you know, vodka, uh, vodka, gin, rum, all that stuff has right. you know a little bit more carbs and calories in it than uh, than whiskey does. So yeah. that's kind of interesting, I guess. Yeah, I mean, according to the American Society for Clinical Nutrition, they pub published a study in 1991 that suggests the moderate intake increases energy and decreases the desire for sugar intake. Very so, interesting. I mean, I guess you could say like whiskey kind of has that like sugary, like not craving, but satisfaction to it, I guess. Hmm. I would say depending on the whiskey, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to, not, I'm not saying like, not you know, whiskey, I'm not saying whiskey has sugar in it. That's not what I'm no, saying. Wait, it's a, it's a, it, it, well, it has more flavor to it than other, than other liquors. Yeah. So like, it's, like, you know, it, but, it, but it says it decreases the desire for sugar. Yeah. Or, well, maybe because sucrose. I feel like that's I feel like that's probably because well, you wake up with the hangover it, and no, you're just like, no, no, I feel like it's it's because it, it has it brings its own flavor. Yeah, like things like vodka doesn't have much flavor. Rum, yeah, a little bit more, but not that much flavor. Gin, yeah. tasteless. Yeah. And I mean, it <laughs> says like it says here if you're counting your calories, a shot of whiskey is equivalent to sixty four calories. Yeah, so not bad. Not well, bad. I, just, I just had you know? sixty four calories. Yeah, yeah. So. Now just um, drink a whole bottle yeah. of that. And now I can't have nothing for the rest of the day. Thank <laughs> you, rye whiskey. <laughs> so next up, uh, apparently, um, and there wasn't a wasn't a source or a study uh, quoted on this one, but it is a uh, cancer prevention, uh, whatever you want to call it. it. So it helps with cancer prevention. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I like the way. All right, I like that. <laughs> I like the way you worded it. how? So apparently, um, you know, like. Whiskey has a high concentration of elagic acid, yeah. which I don't know a whole lot about that. So I probably should, you know. Well, in school, granted, we're not like whiskey. Well, I'm not subject yeah. matter experts. You know, you know, if there's any like healthcare professionals out there that can like ex uh, elaborate on yeah. this elagic acid, um, this is just like so. Apparently, thing. you know, it, it's elagic acid is an antioxidant that uh, that neutralizes cancer causing free radicals in the human body. So. I guess if you know you drink some whiskey, then uh, then this like elagic acid does help to uh, to fight um, the free radicals that uh, you know are, they can cause cancer and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah and then yeah. it goes on to say, uh, single malt whiskey is said to contain more antioxidants than red wine. So a lot of people drink red wine for the yeah, quote unquote yeah. health benefits of it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, apparently single like and um, single. single malt. So like single malt whiskey apparently has more antioxidants. I don't know why that is. I don't know why, like it's like what sets it up, up you know, apart as far as that goes for, from like other whiskeys, but definitely interesting. Yeah. Um, it says it's a, uh, uh, it aids in stroke prevention, Oh, which could be interesting. The key to consume, the key is to consume in moderation. Yeah. That's what it says. Yeah. So this yeah, isn't definitely. saying like, just go, I'll be like, all right, I'm never going to get cancer because I'm going to be drunk 24 <laughs> seven. <laughs> it says because of the, it's blood thinning properties, a daily shot of whiskey can lower a person's risk of 
is ischemic. Yes, it's clot clot caused. Yeah. 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 So I mean, and also, uh, apparently, whiskey treats the common cold, which I've heard from yeah, like people drinking hotty toddies and stuff. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. From my sister, who we're actually gonna have on the show, um, that she used Jameson. She mixed it. She mixed the drink. Used Jameson, um, to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When we get her on here, we'll definitely ask her. Solve her yeah, common yeah. cold. Somebody's gonna have to remind me though, because uh, I have a little bit of dem- dementia going on. Yeah, I'm, like I'm gonna, I'm old, gonna, I'm gonna shoot her a text now. Yeah. Um, since we're almost done talking about this topic, and yeah. you know, we're having her on, having her on the show for our next topic, and the remain pretty pretty much the the biggest topic yeah. of today's episode. Speaking of my uh, 23 year old dementia going on, <laughs> um. Whiskey, so this is coming from, uh, it's the Division of General Medicine and Primary Care at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so they say that uh, that whiskey lowers the risk of dementia. What? Yeah, and so, um, and in this study that they conducted, uh, they it said compared with, ab- with abstention, so like, you know, like just not drinking at all. Consumption of one to six drinks weekly is associated with a lower risk of incident dementia among older adults. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So definitely uh, getting ahead of the game here because, to be honest, I'm, like, super forgetful. Like, <laughs> like Bree tells me literally all the time, she's like, babe, you have dementia. Like, I'm like, ah, do I really? Like, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, but That's yeah. like when, when anybody tells you anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, apparently, I think ultimately the best health benefit out of all of this is uh, whiskey is said to pro- to prolong your life. Really? So this is coming from University of Texas at Austin. Um, this is a study that they conducted. Um, it says abstainers and heavy drinkers continued to show increased mortality risks of 51% and 45% respectively compared to moderate drinkers. And so this is uh, this study was conducted with a uh, with a sample of um, eighteen a little over eighteen hundred people between the ages of fifty five and sixty five, and basically so like their um, most like their like their mortality um, their like mortality st- uh, statistics come from basically just like death certificates. That's how like they proved it. Of these eighteen hundred people, you know, they measured the the people who were like just didn't drink at all, and then the like heavy drinkers yeah, and then the group of moderate drinkers who like drank, you know, like quote unquote responsibly, I guess. Quote and of those, quote. I mean, they're nearly, you know, fi- like around 50% more likely to, or I got a 50 around a 50% higher chance of death. Once you get to that age, if you're a abstainer or a heavy drinker. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry that I'm I'm kind of distracted right now because I'm trying to pull up the screen recording on my laptop. Yeah, but I can't find it. But honestly, like the the most I feel like the most uh, like like surprising part of that is that the abstainer the group of its abstainers had the highest uh, mortality risk, like even like even higher than like than the heavy drinkers. Yeah. So like, basically, I mean, don't is, drink at all. You're more is, likely to yeah. die. That is Which pretty is crazy, yeah. Exciting. I mean, Isn't it? Cause it's it, exciting to look at because it's yeah. like, yeah. I, I, I would feel like I'm a moderate drinker, you know? I feel like, you know, I drink like a no. healthy amount. No. <laughs> <laughs> no? Healthy isn't a lot or healthy is I mean, in- <laughs> maybe not since Bree's been gone. I've been drinking a lot more, but I think on, a, on like a normal time, like normal, like. Normal life. Yeah. Normal day to day. Yeah, because life is yeah. very exciting right now. Yep, you know, chilling at the house. I uh, have a test I got to take like tonight, tomorrow. <laughs> so super excited about that. But yeah, uh, I think I'm just gonna play some Call of Duty. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> got to <laughs> study for this test about the the heart and the blood, the lymphatic system, endocrine system. So that's gonna be super exciting. It's gonna be a high point of my week. Hmm. You know the high point of my week. Today. Why? I don't know because I really didn't do it. Because we're doing the podcast. Actually, yeah, yeah, twenty four yeah, hours. I would say you know this is kind of a higher point. Yeah. For the week. Well, I mean, I had I had twenty four hour shift and I really didn't 
you know what I'm saying, do anything but kind of just, you know, look up different things and, and talk to Wooden about the health benefits of whiskey. Yeah. And he was like that the whole like uh the first what was the first one that we looked at? Number ten? What was that? And where it said oh, the it, first health yeah, benefit? Where it said that the weight loss aid? Yeah, the weight loss aid. He was like he was like, I really don't trust any any tests that were done prior two thousands because a lot of a lot of a lot of tests were done and paid for by different companies to try to like sell their product you know what i'm saying fair enough and, that, and that's what he fair was saying enough. he was like i don't trust anything well this is a this is i mean a, re- a recent article this is like a pretty recent article and the, yeah the, the uh, article was but all like, the studies that that were quoted on this so not so not all the points had actual studies like professional studies that were quoted yeah um but the ones that were that, that were cited like those studies i mean are pretty recent with the exception of the uh of the study that it prolongs your life just because yeah. i mean that's like that was like a 20 year window i mean these like so they had like a 20 year follow up period yeah that they just asking how people were yeah, and yeah and then they're you know confirming these death cer- death certificates and stuff like that so i mean i'm I sure would, i'm sure the conclusion to that is pretty recent yeah but um i didn't actually look look up the uh the actual like like yearly time frames that i would like to do done. i would like to i would like to do a Maybe like a show where okay. we talk about like vaping. Okay, so yeah, yeah. so the uh, the study on late life alcohol consumption and twenty year mortality, which is what that study was titled, was yeah. uh, said it was first published on to the twenty fourth of August in two thousand and ten. Okay. So. Okay. Know. Yeah. All so right. I mean, that's pretty recent. All right. So after a little bit of malfunctioning here, I kind of got it. So. Now we're going to go ahead and give Samantha a call. Give my sister Samantha a call. Yeah. Heck yeah. This is uh, FaceTime. Well, this is two in a row. We got both two your sisters in, row, yeah. in two Last weeks. week we did yeah. <laughs> um, Danielle. This week is Samantha. Yeah. So. Hello. Hey. What's up? How's it going? Good, good. So we are about close to 20 minutes in. Yep. Um, and we just finished up our second topic. So for our audience, um, everybody, this is my oldest sister, Samantha. So Samantha, say hi. Hi, everyone. And also <laughs> it's a special shout out. Today is her birthday. Oh, Are we going to sing? No, we're not going to sing. Oh, happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> we're not going to sing. Oh, I think she got enough it. of that today already. <laughs> um. You know, after you hit thirty, you don't want people to sing for you. <laughs> that's how I mean. That's how I am, and I'm still like my early twenties. So, man, yeah. I am three years away from thirty. So, yeah. like, Jesus, yeah. You wanna, you wanna, so I'll g- kind of give you a show around. So this is okay. this is Rhett. How you doing? Hi. So he's kind of our audio tech guy. He's got all that stuff figured out, and then that's Alex. What's up? So he's the one that basically Hi. does all of our research. And, or puts it together. And, I like and, research and, and development. Yeah, research and <laughs> I like development. That. Yeah. I like that. So, Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> I love right. the bullet bourbon. Yeah. Um, Alex, go ahead and tell her what you thought of how you how you thought it was. I don't like it as much as I like bullet bourbon. So it's the bullet rye. It's like the bullet ninety five yeah. rye. So I don't. But like that being said, I'm not a fan of rye whiskey in general. So you know, I love I love bullet. I love bullet bourbon. Like. Mm-hmm. That's one of my that's one of my go tos as far as just like a day to day whiskey to drink, but um, yeah, yeah, I mean, not bad, not good. I think, you know, I, think, I, think I think it's just a pretty plain old whiskey, you know. I yeah, think it's just a pretty standard across the board whiskey. It's not like crazy, nothing, inch, no crazy know. flavors going on. Yeah, nothing like super exciting about it, but it's good. I'll have to send you guys some TX so that you yes. guys have that yeah. one of your shows. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So my sister. You know, she lives in Texas. And she's lived there for how many years now? Um, uh, December was two years. What part? Austin. You live in Austin. I used to live there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I love, love Austin. It. I love it. Keep Austin weird. Those of you who don't know, Bullet <laughs> Bullet <laughs> is distilled in Texas as well. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly where in Texas. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. 
<laughs> I just know when I moved here, I discovered it because I like Jack Daniels a lot because it has that sweetness to it, and Bullet had that same sweetness, so that's why I like okay. Bullet. Well, um, I'm gonna stand corrected. Um, so the bottle actually says distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, <laughs> and bottled by the Bullet <laughs> Distilling Company in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm. Um, well, damn, I don't know where I, I, I oh for two wrong. on that one. Yeah, I swear that I heard that it was that it was made in Texas. <laughs> I don't know where. See I that, that that proves my point. La- what I said last time, like, you believe yeah. anything anybody yeah. tells you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really thought it was made in Texas, though. So, but all oh right, well. We'll, we'll we'll have to get some Texas whiskey here in the next few weeks. Some yeah, TX we whiskey. Will. Yeah. So, if you need me to send some? Just let yeah. me know. Honestly, it might be. I'm wondering how fast that would take. You know, if for you to be able to send a bottle to us. Like with everything well, going on, normally, normally not very long, but I, I don't know with all this stuff going on. Yeah, I but, mean, I, I know, I'm, I'm sure the, you know, the mail, mail's still running, right? It yeah, is, mail, it is mail still UPS, running, FedEx, yeah. all that stuff still going. Yeah. Out. So I, I can't I imagine that taking, it would take too long, but I, can't, I couldn't see it taking really. Any I, yeah, I have a, now. I have a friend back home that works for the post office, and she complaining that she's still working. So yeah. All right, so Thanks. for our <laughs> major topic of this week's episode um the top acts topic actually got started last weekend <laughs> sunday night over a game of uh shot roulette over Aye. a game of shot roulette we were playing with tequila <laughs> yeah actually we ran through tequila vodka malibu yeah um yeah we a lot just, of stuff yeah i was hammered yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, i had to get up and work the next day <laughs> i was basically <laughs> after probably what an hour and a half or so of drinking playing the game we were definitely all feeling ourselves a little bit yep. and then I don't even know how that topic got started, but we started talking about I don't whether either. basically but. if, you know, if knowledge is power, if you believe, you know, that going to college and getting a degree and taking that route and, and starting a career that route is more beneficial versus experience. Yeah. You taking the more, ex, uh, not traditional route and, Learning through experience, just jumping into a job, yeah, jumping into a job, an apprenticeship or an internship or something like that, where you're gaining more of like the work experience as opposed to going to college and like having a have an actual degree on paper that says that you that you're qualified to do this job. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit. I feel like it's a little bit more unofficial. Both have their pros and cons, but yeah, for sure. I think, um, well, and I think a lot of a lot of it has to do with the job itself. Agree. Too, Agree. Because uh, there's a lot of things that you can't do if you even doesn't matter how much experience you have if you don't have a license or a degree in that field. Right. Right. Yeah. Or any form of or any form of certification and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion with uh, you know just in the room here, but uh, <laughs> I'm a firm believer, and I think it was probably the way I was raised, but I'm a firm believer that education is like is is paramount as far as okay as far well as, i have a question for you then is experience not education it is to an extent <laughs> it's unofficial education absolutely i only saw so but i'm not what, what so i'm not it, saying okay, I'm, okay. I'm, i say this i say this coming from okay so like my career for the past 13 years has been a bartender Right. I can tell you right now, 90% of people that go to bartending school aren't going to get hired as a bartender because guess what? You don't have experience. Uh, so unfortunately, you did, you got that certification you paid X amount of money to go get, and it really does you no know, good. Yeah. You need experience. So like in that field, again, I think this is where it comes in the field, but I mean, but I, I if I was going to go be a doctor, I can't, you know, it does, again, I can work in all the hospitals I want and watch them stand next to a doctor all day long, but you know, right. that experience will never get me the education I need in order to be a surgeon or a doctor. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So base. So when I leave here, when I get out of the army and I leave, uh, leave Hawaii, um, right now I'm moving towards, um, getting my, uh, emergency medical technician certification, right. To be an EMT and doing that one, you know, just to, mm-hmm. you know, so I'll have a job set up for when I get out and two, so it'll give me work experience to go along with my education um, once I, once I start, you know, getting towards getting closer to applying for the master's program that I want to go to. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I really want to get into like a physician assistant program and go that route. Yeah. So, and like, awesome. you know, that's a, yeah. And that's like, 
you know, being an EMT is like you have that patient care experience. You have like, you know, a little bit like, you know, some like prior medical training and stuff like that. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's experience to go along with the education, but I still think that the education part of it is paramount. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that I definitely think it's important and especially in that kind of field. And, you know, again, I wouldn't go into a hospital and be like, Oh yeah, let me get the nurse who doesn't have a degree to work on me or the doctor who doesn't know what he's doing. Right. But I would definitely, so my thing is, is is like, you'd be surprised at how many people like they, they judge you off of that because you don't have the degree, but yet like, if they were to actually give you the chance because you have, because you know, you have the experience and they don't, you know, that even though that person, yeah, they have a degree and they have their name on a piece of paper that gives them the ability to say that they are qualified for whatever they are, whatever career field it is that say myself and what just I'm um, hypothetically speaking with my experience, I'm able to outper- outperform that person who has the degree yeah, tenfold. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. just, like, so, yeah. and I'm, I'm a firm believer I think in, in those in situations, life. it's a technicality. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, if you're working for a corporate company, it's a requirement because Bob from 1952 said that he needs it to be this way. You know, like it's not necessarily <laughs> yeah. because yeah. it's something that, you know, nowadays needs to happen. It's just like one of those in the fine print. And I think that a, another um, great example of it right now in our time right now is look at the un- unemployment rate right now. Yeah. We're at a ex- a record breaking high. Like six, six over six million, million people, people um, applied for unemployment. Yeah, you know, and that's where, like, what, like I, I believe in self education. I believe like you can literally find everything on the internet for free. Yeah, I mean, we have like countless resources for things now. Learn in sc- that pay a hundred. Two hundred thousand dollars tuition to go to school. Yeah. So I mean, I don't really understand that. You know, like <laughs> right now, everybody that ha- already has, like for instance, like a side hustle, or they have like a a drop shipping business, an e commerce business, or basically to where they're able to work online. Yeah. Like they are, they're the ones that are winning right now yeah. over everyone. Yeah. I totally agree. I'm kind of a perfect example of that. I mean, I. I don't have a job right now. And it's not that I don't know how to do anything else, but I don't have, I don't have the experience or the education in the companies that are hiring. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I mean, so that, I mean you're, you're that, going to school for, well, yeah, but I mean, I, what I'm going to school for, I rec- I need a license in order to perform not only that, but the businesses that do what I'm going to school for are shut down. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, even if I had my license, I'd still be out of work because an esthetician is not a necessity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that like, um, you know, a lot of the times what people, what people can say is like, you know, how many people that, you know, like, you know, um, they actually are able to use their degree in, in real life experiences, you know? And I'm, a lot of people will say, well, well, I mean, I don't use it all the time or I hardly use it. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, I mean, yeah. Like then I, that, 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 that makes, makes me like, think know, like, a lot. then what was, what was that piece of, I mean, yeah, you learned sh- stuff to help you perform your job through going to school. But, and again, it, it kind of goes back to the, it kind of, it, it's depends on what kind of field you're in. Right. Obviously for yeah. like a nursing degree or, or pretty much anything in the medical field, like you got to go to school to get that stuff. Yeah. You're and, not just going to, oh, yeah. you're but, not just going to like start doing the things that they do in school and, and, and build your own experience. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, kind of like what she was saying, like, you know, you have to have a license to do a lot of those jobs Yeah. and the way you get that license is through school. So yeah, it's, it's it, so, a state board certification that there's no way around whatsoever. <laughs> you know, so like back years ago, I mean, you know, there was a lot of like, you know, like say like nurses and like, you know, people like that, that they're, they didn't have a like a formal education, you yeah. know what I mean? Because, but they were like almost grant, I guess grandfathered in because they had been doing it for so long and they had so much experience, like so much like years and years of like patient care experience and things like that, that like, you know, they were able to perform their job and like almost outperform people, you know, that, that had just gotten out of school 
you know, that have, yeah. have been through a formal education and things like that. So like, I mean, experience, like experience is, you know, definitely counts for a lot. Um, and so uh, another example, um, so you have like, you know, these brand new lieutenants in the military, right? <laughs> You know, these people, <clears throat> these yeah. people get out of, they get out of college. Yeah, sure. They're educated. You know, they have whatever, whatever degree they have. And then they come into the, you know, they come into this job. And I feel like we see it more in like, you know, like combat arms, MOSs and stuff that like these guys get out of college, they have their degree and sure, like they can write a con op all day. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they can write op orders, like op orders, like it's nothing. Yes. Yeah, but emails but back they're, and forth. but they're clueless. You know what I'm saying? Once yeah. you actually get into like a field environment or something like that, they're clueless. Yeah. And that's where like, I mean, and that's, that's why like, you know, they have like a senior NCO with them. Um, to kind of, to, to like sh- walk them to through, guide show them, them the ropes. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, still, you know, I guess like, it, I don't know, like that may not be the greatest example because these people obviously aren't educated in like combat tactics and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah, you know, no, yeah. I mean, I think, I think that goes hand in hand again. It, it's just, it comes again, like, like I'm going to go back to the bartending thing. Like I can sit here and I can tell you how to make every drink in the book, but you're not going to remember, you're not going to learn how to pour. You're not going to get the speed and like what it takes to be a good bartender until you get behind that bar and you make those drinks until right. you've got 50 people in front of you and that you have to serve all at once. Like you don't get that experience until you're behind that bar. So, I mean, I can, it's the same there. You don't get that experience until you're out there doing what it is that you guys do and yeah, have to learn yeah, exactly you know you can exactly. i can read a book all day long and try to memorize something but you don't truly learn to do something until you've done it right yeah yeah so i mean which proves you kind of what the, the well the point that you were you that you had brought up you know like you want somebody you're able to train right yeah okay yeah so like you know i feel like it's back to that. This is one. This is one of the points that we brought up when we were uh, initially arguing about this. I wouldn't say we were like <laughs> civilly. It arguing. was a pretty heated um, conversation. It was hot. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it, it was hot that we had alcohol. In we our were system. yelling. Yeah, it was probably the alcohol yelling, but we were definitely. Those yelling. are the best. Those are the best, though, because it just yeah. shows how passionate you guys are about what you feel, and yeah. it's okay to have those feelings. I totally you know? agree. I literally ran upstairs and grabbed my computer. I'm yeah. like, "Yo, stop talking! Stop talking!" I'm right back. <laughs> you <laughs> really like, did. It was sprinted funny. upstairs, tripped up the stairs, grabbed like, my computer. God damn, this dude's serious. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, you know, you have like, so you have like people, you know, who are experienced in a job. It could be whatever job, and then you have these, you know, newer people who are just getting out of college and coming into this career field, you want, you know, as that experienced person, you want people that you can train. And these educated people, I feel like are much easier to train because they're already familiar with all of these things. They may not have like the experience needed to like, you know, be fast at the job or like, you know, do the job the most effective way. Yeah. But they know the job regardless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like those people are much more trainable than just people any Tom, Dick or Harry you pull off the street. You know what I'm saying? So like, so like as a bartender, would you rather have somebody who has like their bartending certification or just some random, random Joe you pulled off the sidewalk? Be like, Hey man, come serve these drinks. Like who, who would be the easier person to train? So that, is, feel- so that you're, you're using two completely different kinds of people. You like, yeah, you're saying you pull Joe. You're not, first off, no bartender is going to go pull some random person off the, the street. Bar and- yeah. I wouldn't if be so sure. Walk in the bar and be like, right. I want to okay. learn how to Depends, on, that, stuff depends like on where you're happens. at. Depends stuff on where like that at. definitely happens. Not, not necessarily, I mean, only with bartenders or only with certain jobs, but I mean, things I think, like that happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a double edged sword because the way I view that kind of stuff is like this. So it's like, I'm a very quick learner and I pick up things very fastly. Right. Fast is not the proper word. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> you know, so if I'm going to walk into an establishment or a business where I have no idea what they do, but I've read the job description and I have a gist of what to do. I'm just going to, I'm going to hope that they give me a chance because for the most part, within one or two d- days, I can pick up everything. Right. So when it comes to bartending, like that's kind of, kind of what happened. I kind of got thro- thrown behind the bar and I was kind of like, okay, well, how do you make this? How do you make this? I would look up and I would do my own research and I would just start practicing. And then I just kind of picked it up. So as a bartender, if someone was to come in, I think it would just really depend on the person's work ethic and because I've trained people who didn't know anything and I've trained people who went to bartending school and it, it just really depends on the person. Right. Yeah. So yeah. because again, when it, especially and bartending is a very unique job because I mean, 
I've, again, I've been doing it for a very long time. Thai people come in and they're like, oh, I want this drink. And I'm like, I have no idea what that is. And they're like, oh, you don't know? And I'm like, no, there's like literally over 10,000 different drinks and every state makes them differently. Right. How about you tell me what's in it and I'll let you know if we have it. And it's usually something that is just called something else, but then they've called it that, you know, yeah. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. but... I like I don't know back, I the well back to back to like what I was trying to say is like you know you're gonna like I said nobody's gonna pull I'm not gonna say nobody I'm sure there's been cases that people have just like in a dire need situation they need somebody real quick but like for instance if we're gonna talk about bartending like whether it's you know my sister and she and they're hiring a new bar back or or a bartender or some other bartending business <laughs> right. like they're not Bar just gonna yeah they're not just gonna be like hey mary you look pretty cute why don't you come back here and, and hey, make these drinks make these drinks okay go on i would watch it when it comes to females i have seen plenty of people get thrown behind a bar because they're a girl they're pretty and they don't know how to do shit <laughs> okay fair enough fair that enough. is that is a fair point well, i mean I, that I, bar, in a bartending role that is a very you just mm. well like like i told y'all last week though um the my one of my old sergeant one of our old sergeants from ninety fifth, he was getting out and looking to be a, a police officer. And like the police the police officer said that they would rather take somebody who was in the Mary uh in the military, right? Had the, the combat experience. We're all fucking up our words over here. <laughs> yeah. But not had <laughs> but like they they would they would rather take just anybody who had a random MOS but had the, the combat experience instead of taking an MP. Because they're already set in those ways. They already set in their, their own patrol and they can't train them the way that they want to train them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. yeah. So that kind of um, goes along with what I was going to talk about. Um, so there's like a, I feel like there's almost a certain arrogance that comes with education, you know, when you're going into a career field, yeah. you know, and you, you like, you have people who um, are coming into the same field and, you know, possibly like working next to you or whatever that, you know, don't have that education. You almost feel like you're better than them. Yeah. You know? And like, like be, you're, you're because, saying like if an MP you, was go to going to work at like a exactly, sheriff's apartment. I, yeah. I feel like that fits, you know, you I know. mean, they feel like they're like, Oh, I've done this for years. Yeah. You know, I was in the military, right. like all this whole, and, they, and they're going to do what they did in the military. Yeah. But that's it, not what the sheriff yeah, or the police department wants. Right. Exactly. And it's, exactly, it's yeah. more difficult to train those people to do the job yeah. that you want them to do and the way you want it done. Yeah. Because, because like you said, they're setting their ways, yeah. you know, like yeah. these people like come out of college and they're like, okay, well, like I know how this, I know how this works. Cause I have my or like, bachelor's in it. Or even, like, I, have a I think it's definitely a mentality that, that people have. And it's unfortunate because anybody, I mean, I'm not much older than most of you, but like, as you get older, you realize it's like at no point can you not learn something. And at yeah. no point, no matter how much you've learned, do you know it all? Yeah. So it's like. You, and you have to go through life with that mentality. And there are so many, so many people that come out of college or come out of a job and they have to humble themselves a little bit because they think that they know everything just because they went to school or just because they've been doing something yeah. for X amount of time. And, I, and that's what I think. I, mean, I think that's what's so important about like uh, internships and apprenticeships, like to give you that that kind of experience, you know what I'm saying? On top of that degree or whatever yeah. you have. like. Uh, I, I just feel like as, as in the audio field, right? I have a degree. It just says, I know how to work all this stuff. Yeah. But I don't know how to give you a certain sound. Right. That's what, yeah. that's what internship does. You work under somebody who has a certain sound and they, they teach you how to get that or like any, even with video production. Yeah. Like certain yeah, shots. Absolutely. Or, you know what I'm saying? The way certain things right, look, you, know, you, know, you work. Under, you can, you can like for me, you can tell me like, what kind of shots you want and uh, like you have to explain to me the type of shot you want versus because there's a lot of shots that are called certain things yeah right? you know and for instance a, a well-known one is called b-roll a-roll and b-roll a-roll is your main feed so a-roll is like you actually <laughs> seeing the people talking you know, like you see them talking b-roll is something that's played over top of them. So, for instance, there's there's narrative, but yet it's a shot of like the forest. You yeah, know, right. that's B roll. Right. You know. So, yeah. and there's a there's a ton of other terminologies, but basically, like, let's say I don't know 
what terminology you're talking about, which this goes in, in hand in hand with, you know, Samantha saying somebody coming up to her and asking for her for a drink. And she doesn't know what that drink is because they call it something in, in another state and she calls it something different at right. her bar. Right. So, and not only that, but like, you know, people are coming up with new terms for things every yeah. day. Yeah. New things are coming out every single day. Yeah. So it's having to stay up on that too. It's kind of like, it's kind of like playing, stuff. you know, you playing beer pong. You go to a new, uh, this party, <laughs> I don't know this. You go to a party and everybody's got their own version house of house rules. rules. Yep. You know? Yeah. So like what like you think that's, so, you know, you're playing beer, po- beer pong and you're, you think it's going to be played this certain way and you, you call something out in the middle of the game and they're like, like what? No, like, that's not how we do <laughs> like, it. House like, rules, like, like, seriously, like you and I, like we have completely different beer pong. Yeah. Like, you, you, I play pool cup, you play leaf cup, leaf cup. No, I don't even no. know what that is. <laughs> no, I play pool cup, you play leaf cup. Nah, bro. Yeah, you no, I'm telling you. Wait, like, hold when on. you make the cup, you pull the cup. Yeah. Wait, what? That's Wait, how oh, I play. Oh, oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. you you're don't right. pull you're a cup. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You have what? me confused. What in the hell yeah. is leaf and pull cup? So, so like, when you make what? a shot, I know I'm lost. So when you toss the ping pong ball and you make it in the cup, I play pull cup. So if that, as soon as that ball is, is in, in the in cup, there, you pull I pull it. it. Yeah. But some people play it where they leave it, and then if their their partner makes it in that same cup, then it's game. Oh yeah. No. The, so that's not. So with us, that's not game. What right. is that? But Everybody <laughs> plays differently. Yeah. But no, no, no. I, I like that. What's we, most we common? Call it deaf cup, though. What's most common deaf is cup. if you make both balls in the same cup, then it's like three, right? Yeah. Yeah. And balls back. And so another way I play what is. What happens if you just make both balls? You just get to go again. Exactly. Balls back. Yeah, see, you still get balls back. You still get balls like back. It. We're going to have to have a beer pong episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to have a whole episode playing beer pong. I mean, yeah, we're. Well, I mean, we're Almost honestly, like even like so, like when like Dylan and I like play pong go and we have like little get togethers, like we don't have set house rules. We really like, don't. We every we kind of like, accommodate every time, every time for who's we just there. we just compromise. Oh yeah. And it's just kind of a clusterfuck of both our rules. We'll just both compromise and get a whiteboard, write the house rules and just hang it up. We really should. We could just get a code. Just board put head headhunter, that's one of my favorite rules. Put that one on there. See, I don't even know what that I don't know what that is. So if you, <laughs> if you if you airball if you airball the cup and I catch it clean with my left hand, I get to throw it the fuck out of Does it have to and be your I, left hand? Yes. <laughs> It has to be your left hand. If I catch it clean, it's got to be a clean catch, too. It can't be like pop. And what pop. happens if you knock the cup over? What then happens? No, I, I get to throw it at whoever whoever shot it. And if I hit them, they got to pull the cup. Baton Rouge shit over here. Man, I'm, <laughs> I hit Hunter. I'm coming. I'm coming Remind me head. never to play beer pong with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, so basically, we kind of got a little bit off topic there in a different <laughs> different analogy. But basically, to, to finish up this topic is like, you know, a question we have for not only you know my sister but the audience is like are you the type of person who is more inclined to want a college degree for the knowledge right or do you would you rather basically dive straight into something yeah. to get the experience so some, some people would argue both yeah so that's what I was yeah about to I'm, say. I'm gonna have i'm gonna have to argue both for two reasons because i went straight out of high school into a job so I didn't go to college. Now, looking back, especially with me trying to go to nursing school, you know, I would have, I wish that I would have gone, even if I had just gotten an associate and who, ca- I don't even care at this point what it would have been in because going back to school now as a 30 or 31 year old, you know, it's, I'm having to go back and take all those bullshit classes that I really don't want to have to take, but I have to. And it's been, you know, two, yeah. I graduated school 2006, 2007. You know, it's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All that shit is gone. Stuff, you know? <laughs> but, no, I feel you on at that. At the end of the day, again, I think that it, I think it's one of those things where I think it just depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, like, I mean, Dylan, like you were saying, um, you know, with like the like the unemployment rate, what it is now, you know, like the job market is extremely competitive. Yes. It's so much more competitive now than it used to be. And it's going to be even more competitive once this right. is over. Blows over. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, that's that's where like the education plus experience comes in because you want to make yourself as marketable as you can. Yeah. For the job market. So it's, you want course. you want the education plus you want that experience, you know, and you want them you know, like to mesh so that you're 
you know, making like, the best decision. Yeah. So that yeah. you're, you're the I, most eligible candidate. And I think that's why like a lot of, like a lot of schools and a lot of degree programs now, like require you to have internships. You know, they require you to have like a certain amount of hours, uh, you know, yeah. doing an internship, um, in that field in order for you to get your degree, Yeah, you know, yeah. because they're, I mean, obviously, you know, like the schools, like a whole other conversation, the schools, you know, just a money pit, but I mean, they, they do try to set you up to succeed, you know? Um, and like, as far as like gaining like the, the work experience, the education and all that, it all goes hand in hand. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I think, I think for the sake of your listeners and anyone that does, you know, for your future listeners, I think that especially with what's going on in today's world, I think that it's important that people need to understand that they should go to college again, whether or not you use the degree and whether or not it's something that you end up enjoying doing in life or changing at the end of the day, like it doesn't, the the education doesn't hurt. Of course. Not at all. And which is kind of brings me to to what I was going to say. Let me, let me, uh, Get this back up here. I kind of made the phone fall. You broke it, dude. Uh, but um, basically, I had kind of wrote in the notes, you know, a, a common belief is that, you know, college, you know, is a, or yeah, getting a college degree is a safe route. But, you know, I th- obviously there's nothing wrong with, with doing that. But I think that, you know, you should take it upon yourself to, um, find like another source of income, find something that you can do on the side to as back to backup plans, right. you know, that you, that I way, mean, all, and, I mean, we're like right all now, of that's success, almost all more of these successful. Ever. Yeah. All of the successful people yeah. in this world. Think of Ed Milet, Tony Robbins. If you think you can become a millionaire off of one source of income, you are smoking yeah, crack. You better not. be damn good. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> other, I, and you know, let's put professional athletes aside. Income. Like, yeah, there's no way that you can just take one source of income. Well, even even professional athletes don't have one source of income. Yeah, they they get, they're, they get you know, sponsorships. Okay, they yeah, get they have this. They have this base. Well, you but, know, but, but think, but think about job, what you guys, who you guys, are, you guys are talking about professional athletes. Which guess what? They had to go to college, so they just are almost that is true. Like, but they don't have to graduate. What you guys Actually, are about, that is true. They, didn't they have had to. to go to. School. There are a very select few. I'm pretty sure Kobe Bryant got drafted right out of high school. I don't know. I'm pretty I'm sure he did. I want to say I was idea. just watching a tribute video on YouTube to him. And I remember I want to say they played the clip of him in the draft of, or getting drafted. Right. And he might have, but I guarantee you he did some sort of schooling outside of that. Well, I'm I guarantee sure. You, yeah, you know I'm but sure. But well, yeah. he went to, most, most people that like a lot of like doing finance or business management, those are like really popular things to go to college for. Well, I mean, it, it, even being in the military, they preach to you yeah. to get your degrees while you're in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, I mean, you know, us being in the military well, and, and people <laughs> people who are getting out of the military are, I mean, realistically, we do have like a golden opportunity for school. You yeah. know, we get the, with our, you know, the GI Bill, you get your school paid for, you get an MHA. Like you get, you get a, a paycheck too. Yeah. But so, I mean, I mean but like, you can't become, that's, you, that's an, an amazing opportunity. Even, even enlisted, you can't become certain rank without degrees. Yeah. Like Yeah. Oh, I mean so that's like that's like officers. Yeah, officers. Same that, deal. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah, okay, like they have to have a bachelor's to commission, right? Yeah. But or I mean or OCS, but you know, whatever. But you know, in order for them to, to continue um progressing their rank, they ha they have to get like subsequent degrees. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They have to go back to school, get a master's, things yeah. like that. So I mean Yeah. That's well, at every level, but I mean, you know the thing of it is is like I think I think we can maybe maybe continue this on a further episode. Okay. Because I feel like this is a very big topic. It is a very broad long topic. topic to well, kind of I think maybe, different yeah, yeah. branches to it too. There's diff- I think there's different branches because it comes down to like what kind of like it comes down to money. It comes down to all kinds of things. Yeah. You know, it comes down the to person, age. It comes, who you are, yeah. like. So yeah, maybe we could talk about it on live. So. Yeah. When we do it, yeah. Live actually, show. that is one thing we were we were planning on doing is as uh, doing a live, um, and yeah. just taking on questions from everybody. You know, yeah. any questions you guys should you do had. a poll. Yeah, do a poll of who's gone to college, who didn't go to college, who went back after a certain amount of time. Yeah. I mean, 
I'm sure you guys could. Well, that's the only reason I'm here is so I can get that GI. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Hey, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's be, yeah. Here. yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of people. Yeah. That's a lot of people in the military. Yeah, because like my money. my first Plus college money. My first year and a half to two years, I, I went to college in Austin, and it was like. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to go back. I need to finish this. That's so. how I was. I mean, I did a year and a half in yeah. college, you know, right out of high school and, like, kind of fucked around. Yeah, it's me, a lot. yeah me too. Had a lot of fun. Yeah. A little me, bit too much fun. Yeah. But, you know, and I mean, you know, that's kind of why I enlisted in the military to begin with is I was like, you know, I want to change the pace. I want to, like, reevaluate. Yeah. And then, you know, if I decide to go back to school, I have that money waiting for me. Yeah. But, you know, I, like wanted that um to do something completely different because at that point in time i wasn't completely sure that the major i was going for was what i really wanted to do yeah and here i am now three-ish years later going back going Free. back for the same thing so <laughs> i mean but you know i decided I, mean, sometimes that, I decided that that it that that is what i want yeah and i'm uh, just i'm, yeah. I'm glad, in there. glad you're doing you're doing you yeah. alex you're doing you I'm so proud. yeah well i'll let you Very guys know how this test you. goes here in a few hours <laughs> So, all right. Well, to we're we're running pretty Hi. late on time. Yeah, no, we're about right. So, we're but there, but. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish up uh, this episode. Thank you, Sam, for being um, happy birthday. Being open to Thank coming on the show. You. Yes, happy birthday again. Can we sing um, at the end now? Everybody, please. Are we, sing it? Are we gonna sing it? <laughs> please comment. <laughs> cha cha cha. Uh, on whatever platform and. Shout my sister out. Tell, tell her happy birthday. Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter YouTube, whatever. She shout deserves out Austin. it. Shout out Austin. Yeah, shout out Austin. Shout out to her awesome friends who cooked her dinner tonight. Yes. Uh, and made it a special night for her. So, all right. So, I'll well, talk. thanks for having me, guys. It was great talking to y'all. Thanks, thanks for, being for being patient being with us, yeah. too. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> all right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Two of two done. Rhett, your siblings are up next. Yeah. I don't have any. I have seven brothers and two sisters. Oh. I don't think oh, we should do those are gonna come. Like those months. are gonna be some wild, yeah. wild like, episodes. I mean, like I could. I mean, I could. I could call my sister, and she had. She always got something to say. My younger sister, <laughs> she likes to talk too. Uh, my older brother, he's shy. Probably won't do it. Yeah. But yeah. well, Alex, I, I think uh, you got a final note here. Um, yeah. So I, you know them better than um, I do. You know some really uh, sad news. Sad news. Seriously, like some like sad news, especially for all the country music fans out there. The uh, the old dirty ass Rona, uh, actually uh, took Joe Diffie away from us. So honestly, like thoughts go out to his family yeah. and uh, fans and everyone, um, as well as Bill Withers. Oh man, yeah, oh, like ain't no sunshine. We, yeah, ain't no sunshine when Bill Withers is gone. Like, yeah, honestly. Yeah, prayers like, to his family too. I mean, I did. I definitely so, didn't listen to a lot of their music. I've listened listen to some them. of their music. Yeah, and and they were, you know, incredible artists. Yeah, Joe Diffie. Joe Diffie's one of the one of the you know better vocalists in the last in like recent years. Like yeah. I mean, the last say twenty thirty years. You know, really probably thirty thirty five yeah. years. But God. I mean, he was Joe Diffie was only sixty one years old. Yeah. You know, like he wasn't like. Really, in the grand scheme of things, he wasn't that old. Yeah. You know? yeah but really, it wasn't. Yeah. Well, well, that was a very interesting episode. What do you guys think? It was it was, a, it was a little different from what we're used to doing, but it yeah. is what it is. I, I, think took, was, I took a few notes throughout that, so I got something to come at you when uh, we come back we, to we that. We come back to the topic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll have thanks to. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. I love you guys. Wash your hands. Yes. Use a sanitizer. <laughs> Make Stay sure the you hell in your that. house. Yeah, absolutely. Alex, any final uh, thoughts? Any final statements? Um, Not really. Take no, a shower. Not really, yeah. Yeah. Take a I, shower. I thought you said take a shot. And I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> Give yeah. me something else. Give me that jack. Give me that gentleman well, jack. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for tuning in to episode five. We really appreciate it. Please, uh, you know, like always, like, comment, Subscribe to our YouTube channel, share our videos, share our podcast. Please help us get our name out there. We're really, you know. Oh, in our live. Make sure you check in that our out. live. Yeah, so stay uh, tuned for all uh, to all our socials. We'll be posting up um, the date and time for our live episode coming up. We're working on uh, kind of working out the kinks. Dylan yeah. and Red are all about that right now. So, yeah, we'll it's... get all that stuff ironed out and uh, get the date and time up for you guys. Um, 
<laughs> try to try to get us find a find a happy medium for like the the mainland time and the Hawaii time yeah. for all our friends out there. But yeah, so but yeah. All right. With that being said, guys, take care. Uh, wash your hands. Was- use hand sanitizer. Take a shower. Stay inside. Don't do anything stupid. And hit us up. Yeah, hit us up. And also, let us know what we should drink next week. We already have a fat list. I'm going to be honest. It's well, gotten, it's it's gotten, gotten pretty long. Whatever gotten whatever pretty you guys long. recommend, maybe yeah. maybe it'll, it'll we'll jump its way up the list. the list. Hey, if anybody has any tequila recommendations, we all know Cinco de Mayo is coming up in Ooh, a month. Oh, yeah. We can switch tomorrow, it up. A month from tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah, we, we need to, to be uh, well, Cinco de Mayo. Exciting. Yeah, I hope you guys are ready for uh, margaritas and tequila shots. And I hope we do that beer pong episode. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll schedule that one in. All yeah. right. Thank you for tuning in to the Whiskey Ways podcast. You guys have a good one. Is it leave cup or pull cup? You'll never know. Leave cup. Pull cup. Leave cup. <laughs> pull cup. Wrong. <laughs>